This episode is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. Manscaped just hooked me up with a bunch of stuff. The perfect package 4.0. It's a trimmer. It's waterproof. You get 90 minutes once you put it on the charger. Turn it on. Plus, you get free boxer, free bag, and you get the t-shirt that I got on right now. Plus, you get the liquid to keep you fresh to death. All you gotta do is go to manscaped.com, use the promo code can't wait 20. You get 20% off plus free shipping, plus two free gifts at manscaped.com. Plus you get a newspaper. We say balls. So all you gotta do to get 20% off is go to manscaped.com plus free shipping plus two free gifts and use the promo kit promo code can't wait 20. Back at you with another episode coming at you from chooseyourrelationships.com offer of love can't wait which can be found on amazon.com i have a special guest for you today uh she's a certified dating and relationship coach who supports men to achieve healthy and authentic and loving relationship and she also has a podcast that i really like called the self confident project my special guest today is kimberly hill welcome to the show thank you thank you for having me excited to be here yeah, thanks for making time to do this. So how did, well, first off, where are you from? Well, good question. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, I grew up here actually south of the city in a town called White Rock, which is just about 10, 15 minutes from the Washington border. So how did you get started as far as uh, coaching men and women, uh, you know, as far as helping guys to uh, become a better man and attract women. How how did that get started? I I don't think <laughs> you 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 were in school one day and said, you know what, I want to be a dating coach when I grow up. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely didn't. I didn't even know there was a thing uh, such as dating coaches or even coaching in general when I was in high school. Uh, so no, I didn't get into doing this work through thought alone. It was through, you know, twisting and turning and different experiences that I had. But uh, when I was around 19, I, I left Vancouver to go on a backpacking trip overseas. I went with one of my good friends, Melissa. The, the plan was to kind of take this one way ticket to Bangkok, Thailand, throw our backpacks on and, and do that whole, you know, explore the world and then come back, finish uni, get a job, be a good citizen. Uh, but it turned out that, you know, traveling was way too much fun. So I ended up uh, moving to Sydney, Australia, and somehow ended up working in financial derivatives. Mm -hmm. So here I am, like in my young 20s, I've arrived in Australia, I, you know, had told my parents that I'd be back in two, three months. Uh, and it turned out that I was away from home for 10 years. Uh, so I worked in financial mm -hmm. derivatives for I think seven, eight something years. Uh, and that's a very male dominated industry. So I ended up working with men all this time, uh, traveled with them, reported to them, hired them, fired them. Uh, and it was about me on a broking floor of about 98 guys. Mm -hmm. There was one girl that worked on the bonds desk and maybe two women that worked in the back office. So, you know, me, myself and I, right. Like you got to learn to kind of kick it in that career and stand up for yourself and be assertive. Um, and uh, but at the same time, I also was having my own failed relationships with guys mm. and I was witnessing the kind of struggles that these guys were going through as well, like managing very um, high stress careers, going out, entertaining clients and their kind of relationships weren't doing so great either. So I kind of had all these epiphanies and realizations and through kind of working with my own coach over a period of about a year. I then had that realization that you joked about where, you know, I want to become a coach, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I didn't know that I wanted to become a dating and relationship coach. I just knew that I wanted to support people. I'm like a real empathetic person. I have a lot of compassion for others, really, really sensitive uh, person. Um, 
And men just happen to be a really under supported part of the population when it comes to emotional type of support. So mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, total head nod there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so through just a series of, you know, the next few years um, and working with more business coaches, I realized that uh, I kind of redefined my coaching field to stand up and support men in this area. Um, and now I've been doing this for a couple of years. So that's the real short, short and dirty version for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So did you get some pushback being that you, uh, you're a woman when it, mm. when it comes to this? Yes and no. So did I really face pushback? No, but there's always going to be people that critique what you do. So I remember when I first started, you know, being public about being a dating and relationship coach for men and starting my social media, uh, I definitely had some haters in the mix that would say, you know, what do you think you're doing as a woman coaching men? <laughs> Obviously, we get that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, how dare you think you can teach men how to be men? Um, and I was like, where are you guys getting this information from? Like, where does it say that I am coaching men how to be men? Like, and what gives you the notion to think that I would even know what that looks like? Yeah. What I actually do is support men with dating and relationships. None of it is coaching dudes on how to be dudes. Like, that right. would be insane. Um, exactly. So, so the, the hate that I got was kind of like, I didn't really give it much weight because... Yeah you know, people don't really understand necessarily what they're talking about. And so you can't really give them much time and effort. So yeah, but no, 99% of what I do is really well received. Um, and, you know, it's really refreshing for some men to be able to speak to a woman and get a female perspective, especially if they're interested in dating women. Uh, I have a little bit of an inside edge there. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That, that's how I see yeah. it. I always see it as, I mean, a woman is not you should look at it like women are giving you inside information that you wouldn't normally hear, mm -hmm. you know, because totally. guys, a lot of guys, we don't know. We really don't know what women talk about when you're amongst the women. hundred percent. Right. And like there are men or male coaches out there that coach guys on dating and relationships. And some of them are fantastic yeah. and others are just going to repeat a formula that work for them. Yeah. And, and maybe that will work for you too. I'm not saying it won't. It's just, that's not how I operate. You know, how I operate is very unique and individual to the person and what they've been through and what they're wanting to create. Not just a, you know, a seven step formula for picking a girl <laughs> up or a four part sentence for land. You know, it's, that's yeah. not how I roll, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but that might work for people. And like, if it does, then good it's, for you. Like, it's like for. copy and paste. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what are some of the, um, well, especially in the space where you used to work in the finance, what, what are some of the common problems that guys were having at the time? Well, uh, one of the big ones that comes to mind right now is just like a lack of uh, being able to be vulnerable. And that leads into maybe uh, poor communication between uh, partnerships. So, you know, most men have been raised, especially in the Aussie culture, like really raised to, uh, you know, be men to play sports, to be, you know, play rugby, to bet on horses, to make money, to, you know, be in control, be that kind of like, as the world defines it as the alpha male type thing. Um, and that doesn't include being sensitive and talking about how you feel and sharing with your partner yeah. when something upsets you. So, you know, men are trying to fit into this role and it might make them really successful in the workplace, but it doesn't necessarily translate into success in intimate relationships where uh, element of uh, emotions and vulnerability need to have some room. Uh, so that's one of the things I definitely noticed. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of guys think um, if they become vulnerable with a woman, mm -hmm. they look at it as a sign of a weakness because mm -hmm. what, what has happened with a lot of guys is they've, they've done it before. And then the, the woman will, once they become vulnerable with a woman, it, it, it probably happened over here. Once mm -hmm. they become vulnerable with a woman, then all of a sudden she'll lose respect for him and, and leave. <laughs> yeah, and I hear guys say that all the time. And the <laughs> truth is, if you open up and you share something that's important to you to someone that you love and is supposed yeah. to love you back and they don't receive that very well, that's a reflection on that woman, exactly. not on the guy, right? But there is a, a delicate balance between being vulnerable and sharing your emotions 
and then being over the top with it, right? So there's either being totally closed off and never sharing anything of how you feel and shoving it all down. Yeah. And then, then there's like way too much, right? There's oversharing or over emotional yeah, or yeah. where men can actually become very reliant on the women in their lives. That's not very attractive, right? When you're yeah. needy and you get into codependency. So it's about learning where that balance is for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause uh, I got a question a couple of days ago. I think somebody, uh, the guy um, is, is a long time follower. He was like, um, is there a, I guess an appropriate time uh, uh, or uh, I guess um, to uh, to cry, right? Mm. And I said, look, I mean, if somebody dies, come on, man, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> That's very hard to take, you know, and yeah. it, it might be somebody that you're close to, but, you know, but don't feel bad, you know, it's okay to get emotional. If somebody dies or somebody that you love and care about, it's okay. Oh, 100 percent. We need to process yeah. what we're feeling. Here's what society has told us, right? Or told men. There's two times when you can cry. The first time is when your sport team loses, right? <laughs> okay. And the second time is when your dog dies. That's it. Anything else is inappropriate. I remember a client of mine said that when his daughter was born, okay, such an impactful moment in somebody's life he wanted to cry and he held it back because he felt like that was a sign of weakness. Yeah. Crying when your daughter is born is yeah. such a beautiful exp yeah. of expression of emotion. And it's such an appropriate time to let that out. But what we have been led to believe our whole lives is that that's not okay. Right. And so instead of enjoying and being mindful in such a beautiful moment that may never, ever happen again, you know, you hold it back because you feel, think that that's what you need to do. And, and that's, that's the sad part about, yeah. you know, what society has taught us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think some of the uh, challenges are today with, with COVID and <laughs> the lockdowns and the mm. restrictions and yeah. oh, goodness? <laughs> well, the trend that obviously has taken place is because of lockdowns and social distancing and all the stuff that happened, especially early days in the pandemic was a huge surge of online dating. Mm -hmm. So people are going online maybe for the first time and let's be real. They don't necessarily have a Scooby-Doo what they're doing. No. <laughs> so you're inserting yourself into what feels like a whole virtual reality. Right. And if you're not really sure what you're looking for, you're not really sure how to present yourself authentically online, or maybe you're not very strong at texting, uh, then all there's so many variables that can fall apart. So what I've recognized, especially in 2021, was guys that are dating online and going, I hate this. It sucks. It doesn't work for me. I don't find the right people on there. It seems really superficial. Complain, complain, complain. But then I asked them questions like, well, do you know what you're looking for? And did you spend time, you know, um, you know, setting up an authentic profile? And are you, are you confident to ask a woman out on a date? And they go, uh, no, uh, no, uh, no. And I go, okay, well, there's some things that maybe we can work on here that are going to increase your chances of having a more successful experience online. Because if you go online and have a super negative attitude, guess what experience you're going to get, right? It's going to match exactly how you're going into it. So definitely, <laughs> definitely that's what's going on. Um, and then, of course, there's also what I'm noticing is like a a lack of social skills. Right? Oh, man, that's a big one. Yeah. So people, it's like <laughs> online dating is one way to meet people. And it's a great way of meet, pe meeting people that are outside your social circles that maybe wow. you wouldn't have met otherwise in the places you frequent. And it can be a fantastic tool, but it is not a replacement for learning how to network and meet people in air quote real life. Yeah. Right. And I've noticed that there's so, so much of a reliance on finding, you know, the right kind of person online. And it's, it's, too much time is being spent online and too little time is being spent figuring out how to be social. And I get it. Lockdowns, restrictions, social distancing, fear, all that that's going on. But especially now, I mean, let's be real. It, it, you can't, we can't isolate ourselves for years and years on end and expect to find a loving relationship. So we need to find some kind of healthy balance. 
Um, so wherever you sit on the scale of, you know, how you feel about what's going on in the world, there still needs to be some kind of room for, you know, spending time with friends and meeting new people, right? It's just such an important part of life. So. Yeah, I, I, I've told a lot of people that the pandemic was the worst thing that could ever happen <laughs> for somebody <laughs> like me. Yeah, hundred percent. Why? Why? Why someone like you? Like, what does that mean? Because I'm a very social person. Yeah, I, I actually like being around people, and yeah. you know, I felt like my my friends and my family, you know, they felt uncomfortable. They mm. they were like, not all of them, but some of them were kind of nervous. They're like, "Hey, you're out in Atlanta, you know? I don't know, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, they just, busy place, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, some of them were like. Now, they know me. I mean, they know how I live. They know my lifestyle and they trust me and everything. But at the same time, they were like, it's not me. It's the other people I might be around. So Told everyone was on like, if we put like fear, because that's what it's going yeah. on, right? Like we're in a fearful mindset. Yeah. And some people had like a little bit of fear and a little bit of caution. And some people like went off the rail with fear. Like, oh, so scared, yeah. Right. And they overreacted. I overreacted. <laughs> totally. And I get that. Like, there's no judgment there, but no, not we, at all. we need to understand that we can't live in that deep rooted fear for very long. It's exactly. too much stress on, on our nervous systems, on our brain. Um, and you know, we have to find a kind of healthy balance there. You can be cautious about what's going on, right? You can follow health guidelines, you know, but you don't have to isolate yourself to the point of like depression and anxiety, which are at all time highs. Right. So, yeah. 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 I don't, I don't think um, a lot of people haven't really bounced back from or, or kind of socialized like like they did before mm -hmm. shut down. A lot of people are kind of like kind of stuck in, in the middle somewhere. Yeah. And. I, I don't think, uh, I don't know when it's going to, I don't know when they're going to get out of there. Yeah, it's a choice that people have to make, right? Like it's, it's believe me, in the beginning of the pandemic, I was like, sweet, I get to like chill at home. I don't need to have any obligations, like I'm working on my business, like doing my thing. Like it was good for three months. Yeah. <laughs> After that, it was not good. I was like, I yeah. miss people. I need, I need a hug. I like, yeah. I like I, we, as human beings, we need connection and community. It's so, so important. There's a 75 year Harvard study that was done that followed like, 75 years that followed these individuals to figure out what the number one predictor of like longevity and happiness was. And it's the quality of our social connections. Yeah. Right. It's like that was over diet and exercise and whether you smoked or not. Like those were all important factors too. But the number one was like the quality of our social circle. So people can't ignore that, right? Yeah. That's yeah. one of the reasons why I started this podcast mm. because I was out of work for two months and I'm sitting around. I, I don't have anything to do. I'm out of yeah. work. So I'm like, well, the only place that was open was the store, the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, what? What am I supposed to do? And uh, somebody start a, start a podcast or become a chef? I don't know. <laughs> no. Well, that's that's what happened. One of my friends uh, called me and said, "Hey, why don't you start a podcast?" Hmm. And, and I said, uh, "You know what? Why not? <laughs> why not?" And that's how this that's how this podcast was born. Yeah. You know? I love it. Well, perfect. I mean, it's a great outlet to you know, to talk about important things and uh, form a community. And I, I love them. I mean, that's why I have one too. So, yeah. So how do you tell guys to uh, meet people today? Mm. I mean, I know some people like the internet. I know, you know, yeah. but in this, well, day, in this day and time, it's going to be a combination, right? Um, when maybe the most important thing is I never tell anyone what to do. Right. And with the way that I coach is very much about helping people realize maybe what they would like to try or things that they might be missing in their lives or new ideas that they maybe haven't thought of. So with the guys that I work with, of course, is depending on where they live, if it's remote or if they're in a city or what passions they have, it's usually about first identifying, um, OK, what kind of relationship are they looking for? Because that's going to determine maybe where they go or spend time. 
Um, and then it's a combination of, okay, do you want to give online a try? Because this is a really great tool. And so we might spend some time on that. And then it's about brainstorming what feels authentic and natural to them in terms of meeting um, someone that they're looking for. So it could be that um, they uh, start being a little bit more social where they're hosting for example, dinner parties, and they're inviting, you know, two or three close friends and asking those two or three close friends to bring people that are new that they've never met before, and expanding social circles that way. Because as we know, like dating can be a numbers game. So the more people we meet, and the more people that know that we're looking for someone special, um, then our chances are going to be higher of getting that introduction. So it could be that they're just trying something like that, just, you know, being a little more social, getting small groups together, meeting new people. Um, I usually am challenging men to say, well, what are your passions and your hobbies? Uh, if they don't have them, we have to address that first, right? If they do have them, then it's like, okay, well, when's the last time you, um, I don't know, let, let's call it their passion is hunting. Okay. Like, are mm. you, you know, meeting people through a community there? Uh, are you artistic and meeting people through that community? Are you getting out in a running club? Do you hit the gym? Like, where are you going where you're actually putting yourself in a situation to meet new people? Because a lot of guys are like, oh, I can't find the right woman. And I say, well, where are you spending your time? And they say, well, I work from home and I date online. I'm like, oh, you need to get yourself out there, right? You're, you know, your chances are going to increase when you're just out living your life and you love what you do, that energy is going to naturally attract people to you. So yeah, we're talking about, you know, what that kind of real life strategy looks like, and it's going to be different for everybody. So, yeah, I agree a hundred percent, you know, sure. So, you could be, go to the bar every Friday night and that uh, might work, right. Yeah. Or you could look at what your hobbies and passions are and then find ways to attract people through that because then you're going to yeah. have some kind of common interest there yeah i agree with that I yeah you know. so how how did the podcast start so my podcast started uh, so when lockdown hit i was actually down in mexico uh and i was planning to like travel three months mexico three months uh another country three months another country three months another country fill out the year um, and so I'm down there, I'm working on my business and I had this idea where I kind of started doing some YouTube videos and they're all been deleted now. So you can't search for them, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they exist somewhere on the internet where they're all gone. So I started doing these YouTube videos and my upload speed in Mexico was so slow. It was taking me literally eight hours to upload something. Mm. And I had a girlfriend, she was like, I love watching your video. She's like, but She's like, I like to go for walks and listen to like podcasts. You should just start a podcast. This is all she said to me. And I was like, well, that would be easier to upload. <laughs> so yeah, I, I literally like just off the back of her saying that I was like, okay, I'm going to just take some of the content that I'm talking about. And instead of trying to film a video and set this stupid camera up and upload this stuff, and it just felt so hard and onerous and it was taking so long. I just opened up GarageBand, recorded an intro and just started chatting away. And before I knew it, I had talked for like 25 minutes and I ended it and I uploaded it to SoundCloud, which is where I was hosting in the beginning. Okay. And voila, my podcast started. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, okay, let's see how this goes. Right. And I said, yeah. well, what's like, what's like a consistency that I think I can like maintain? I was yeah. like, maybe I could do like an episode once a week because you know, this idea of like five times a week it was just, there's no way I was going to no stick way. to it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll release once a week. And turns out I've been doing that for, I don't know, 80 something weeks now. Um, cool. So a year and a half, I was able to maintain that consistency and it's, you know, it's grown organically. And um, here we are today. The self-confidence project is uh, Spotify, iTunes, Anchor, a lot of different places you can listen to it and it's doing really well. So yeah. How, how'd you come up with the name? Um, yeah. So when I first got into coaching, I, I wanted to call myself a confidence coach. Um, and usually that's what I'm actually helping men with. Like let's, when we get really down to it, when it comes to dating and relationships, we're building skills, which means we're building confidence in certain areas. So yeah. I was like, I want to call myself a confidence coach, but every business coach I work with was like, no, you can't call yourself that. And I'm like, why? <laughs> because it's 
super odd. No one's going to know what you do. Like, do you work on confidence with exercise, confidence at work? Like, what does it mean? So I call myself obviously a dating and relationship coach for men, a little more specific, but I really wanted a lot of the topics I talk about to cover like building confidence in different areas of life. And I have a tattoo that I got when I was 18 years old that says self-acceptance. And I've always had this like notion of confidence, self-love. And so I was kind of spitballing ideas for my company name. And I was like, the self-confidence project, that kind of has a nice ring to it. And I just went for it. So (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I could have spent probably like four months trying to think of a name, but I said to my girlfriend, I was like, who told me to start the podcast? I was like, what do you think of this like album art cover the self-confidence project? I'm like, I'm not really sure what to call it. She was like, sounds good. I'm like, good enough for me. And just published it live. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I like, I like the name. I like Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how, um, how did you invite people? How did you invite people on? Was it uh, did you reach out to people on online or uh, what, onto the show? Yeah, uh, a mix. I've had people contact me saying I've been listening to your show. I really want to come on as a guest. You host guests, um, and the first person to ask me that I think was the first person that came on as a guest because I had been doing only solo episodes, um, and then I realized, wow, this is this is easier like chatting and interviewing someone else and getting their expertise versus always having to produce your own content. And I do a mix now as well. Um, And I thought, well, that's fun. It's really lighthearted to get to know people and be social and and learn about different areas of expertise that I'm not bringing to the table. Um, And so now it's a combination of people reaching out to me, uh, me reaching out to individuals I find interesting, mutual connections. Uh, and that's kind of how I've gotten the guests on my show that I've had in the last few months. Yeah, I got yeah. I got started. Uh, I actually brought my friends on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, but... a good, good and a bad thing, probably. <laughs> well, actually, it was, it was funny the first, yeah. first couple of times because uh, <laughs> these are some of my friends that I've known for when I was in the, in the Navy like 20 years ago. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of it was, we were like basically reminiscing from things that we, that happened mm-hmm. back in the day. So a lot of it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the stuff they were saying, I'm like, Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Especially like if you started it during the pandemic, that, yeah. having your friends on your show would have been like such a nice, like social way to connect. Right. Yeah. 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 So I guess before you got started, like, how did you how did you have the confidence to know that hey I can do this? Mm. Uh, yeah, good question. I don't know. Like you sometimes just need to try things. Yeah. And the honest truth was when I left my corporate career and decided to become a coach. You know, most people don't hear this part of the story. That it's not like it happened overnight and now I've got a whole list of clients and I'm making money and everything's good. Like, I wish that was the case, but I remember spending at least a year and a half just failing at everything, failing at how to produce content, failing at, you know, how to niche down, failing at like just how to run a business. And it was just through a series of trial and error. And the only thing I told myself was if I give up, that's when I really fail. So as long as you kind of persist through, you'll figure it out in the long run. And so it was a year and a half of just making a lot of mistakes and learning from it, but never letting that give me enough ammo to say, I'm done. I quit. I can't do this. Um, So it's not necessarily that I was confident at everything. I remember the first video I put out and it was on Facebook. I shared it with like my friends and family and they were like, oh my God, you're a natural. And I was like, you guys have no idea how sweaty my pits are. Like I had to shower after because I'm like, I'm like frozen cold, like trying to do this video all sweaty, but nobody knows like what you're really going through. Yeah. So, and it was just, yeah. Like you could say that I looked confident doing it, but I certainly didn't feel it. So it's just about like persisting and trying. And it's the same thing with like even dating and relationships, right? Like we might not always feel confident walking up to women or approaching them. And the truth is you might get rejected nine out of 10 times. Yeah. But if your mindset is that I'm okay with that, 
then you'll continue to try and guess what on try number 10 you hit it off with the most amazing woman and there starts the beginning of a beautiful relationship right so it's just about having the mindset and what it's called a growth mindset is being open to knowing that mistakes or failures are just a redirection of where you need to be heading uh, and also bring light and bring attention to things that maybe you need to work on because we all have strengths like innate strengths already and weaknesses and it's not that we need to let our weaknesses drag us down it's oh i am a little weak in this area great here's an opportunity for improvement so i fumbled a lot i still fumble but i'm more okay with it now right <laughs> Yeah, I remember I uh, I invited someone on, and we in uh, I what I think I mispronounced her name, mm -hmm. and I fumbled. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. There's a podcast I did a few weeks ago, um, oh and it was with this guy named Chris, and and we had only met like just before the podcast, and then right before we started recording, I said, you know. Um, how do I pronounce your last name? And he told me and I wrote it down phonetically. And then right as I started the intro, I totally effed it off. I started laughing out loud on the show. I apologized to him profusely. And I said, there's no way I'm editing that out and just kept it rolling. And that yeah. intro is still there because honestly, I think people, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think people enjoy authentic and oh, yeah. in, imperfection versus me spending 45 minutes trying to edit everything. And it's like, it's a waste of my time. Yeah. So yeah, imperfection is imperfectly perfect in a way, right? Yeah. No, so no. do you ever see people out in public every once in a while? They say, hey, you're Kimberly. Cute. <laughs> yeah, do, do you ever get that every once in a while? Every once in a while. Like, I would not consider myself particularly popular. <laughs> How maybe, do you... maybe a little on my, like, social media channel. I've got people that have followed me from the beginning. But there's been – there was actually one incident in the grocery store at my house. And at the time, I was buying a bunch of, like, Schweppes tonics. Yeah. And my partner and I love drinking gin and tonic. And so I actually had like 16 cans of tonic in my hand cart. And the guy was like, Hey, are you, are you like Kimberly, like from Instagram? And I was like, mm, who's asking. And then I even got nervous because I'm not usually just approached like that. Um, and I, I remember like when I get nervous, I start to kind of like over talk and overshare. Yeah. Um, and he's like, what are you doing with all that tonic in your cart? <laughs> I was like, oh, these are for gin and tonics. And he's like, 16 of them? I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, like all feeling awkward. Like I look like some alcoholic in the grocery store, even though I don't even have booze in there. But it just was a funny moment where obviously somebody yeah. recognized me from Instagram. And in fact, I think the intuition that I got was that they wanted to ask me out. But uh, obviously I was in a relationship and still am. So it was a definite no. <laughs> that, that usually yeah. happens. Usually go, if it's a guy is, he usually, they usually get excited. If it's a guy, they say, Hey, what's up, man? Mm -hmm. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, they, and, and, and if it's a woman, they usually stare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys like, can do that. And I'd be like, Hey, how you doing? Say, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this guy, like, this is great. This is what I would teach men to do, to be bold and to approach somebody um, and to to do it with a confidence. Like, yeah, I wasn't available and it was a no, but I think that his approach was just fine. Uh, in, in fact, it made me nervous because he was so confident. Um, and that's just a beautiful thing to be able to have those interactions with strangers uh, and leave yeah. them laughing or feeling positive about it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think the first couple times it happened, you know, I, I was in Atlanta, living in Atlanta at the time. I kind of was like, uh, I didn't really know how to take it. Because what, when people approach you? Yeah, I didn't really know how yeah. to take that. Because um, in, a, in a city like Atlanta, you see you see a lot of people. You see mm -hmm. a lot of people that's online. You see some celebrities if you're out and about a lot. So I didn't really know if they knew me, like personally, maybe I met them before or Oh, they met me online. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, if they stare, <laughs> that's when I know, yeah, you, you, you see me online. Yeah, yeah, because they're trying to, like, place it. They're, like, looking. They're, like, is that the guy I think he is? <laughs> yeah. Just wait till they hear you speak. Then they know for sure, right? Your yeah. face matches your podcast voice. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. Too funny. So, 
Mm. So if people wanted to work with you, where mm. would they go? The easiest place to uh, find out more about me is to go directly to my website. Uh, it's triple W dot. Yeah. Kimberly Nina Hill.com. And I just recommend you book a free 45 minute consultation with me. That is by far the easiest way to get to know me and for me to understand what's going on for you and to see if we'd be a fit to work together. Um, but if there's other places to kind of just like consume a little info, you can find me on my Instagram at Kimberly Nina Hill, um, where I put out lots of like free content and fun advice. Um, and if you're not really ready for that consultation, I've got a like freebie handbook, dating handbook for men, uh, teaches guys to kind of overcome the really common five mistakes that they typically make with women that stop them from kind of getting into those relationships. So they can find out some info there too, but usually easiest way is to just book that call. There you have it. Like share this episode. Tell me what you think below until next time we are peace.